I think we should get started with this one. This is a Ground Zero, I think this is the Nuclear Range 4K. Now this is actually the exact same amplifier that I repaired on my first ever amplifier repair video. If you guys remember, the first ever video that I put up on amplifier repair was um, talking about how amps, how these amps work, and I'm pretty sure that it was these amplifiers that I went through and repaired. This amplifier, yeah, pretty sure it was. I'm gonna shift the clamp over a little bit. You can see we've got a, a clamp here, uh, which is far too close to this tr this transformer. I can't get it out, so I'm just gonna shift the shift the clamp over a little bit, so we've got some free space. There we go, that should be enough. Oh god, I was really stuck. Okay. Woo! There's been an explosion on the something on the back of the board. So look, this is always good telltale signs. So if I can get the camera zoomed into here. So that has obviously had something go bang on the underside of the board. So if I flip the board over, we should see something very interesting on the bottom. What else has been going on? They've got some other marks as well on here. So this is all on the power supply section. All right, so now let's put the heat sink down. Now let's turn the board over and see what caused that great big explosion mark. Holy Oh my life. I'm not quite seeing what made that mark, but I'm seeing what I'm seeing what caused the rest of the marks. Right, so that was flip the board back. So that was literally just after these screws. So that looks like it that looks like it was there. Okay, there is actually a small hole in the board there. It's not as big on the board as I thought, but something has gone bang big time. This is not going to be. This is not going to be a cheap repair. <laughs> okay. So, first thing that we need to look at is this horrific mess of a drive transistor section. So all of all of this, this is all carbonized board, and all the traces are either burnt or missing. I don't know if this was like this before, or if, like from a previous repair, or if it's done this. On in its most recent blowing, um, but the board here could possibly be conductive. Look, this driver is not even really soldered in properly. Now the the bit block came from. It was just after the screw holes, so it's gonna. This is the bit that lines up with the mark. On the other side of the board, there is oh fuck, a big capacitor. Okay, so I'm probably gonna go ahead and have to remove all these capacitors because it seems that something underneath one of the capacitors sparked up big time on the board and that's what could have took the power supply down. Very very rarely these big capacitors underneath them they can arc um, if, if they, I mean it looks like maybe this board has been subjected to pretty heavy vibration damage. This amplifier has been in for repair before and you can see that it's been loaded up with loads of like silicon kind of sealant between all the caps and the driver board etc. Um, so I wonder if this amplifier was subjected to vibration damage quite badly at one point and I think perhaps, perhaps underneath one of these capacitors um, it is shorting on the board which, I mean that 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 mark on the heatsink was absolutely huge. That was a big spark that caused that discoloration on the heatsink there. Uh, so I actually want to inspect that. This this hamster, this hamster, absolute mess. I wonder whether this is worth actually getting back up and running again because the drive circuit area is so fucked. First thing that I'm gonna do before I start working on the power supply section. Something caused the power supply to get fucked up big time and there was a big spark in this area So I'm going to remove this capacitor here that seems to have a spark underneath it and If there is damage to the board under there I can look about rep repairing that section of the board 
Because if I repair the power supply section and there is still a bad area of board there, then the power supply will just kill itself again because there's still a short or something. So we need to sort that first before we start work on the power supply section. Oh my goodness, okay. Right, let's, <laughs> uh, let's, so I've desoldered the cap, so let's see what we've got hiding under here. Okay, come on, off you come. Okay. Ha! Huh. Okay, interesting. I was not expecting to see that. It's actually... Com Whoa! Hang on a minute. I was going to say, so there's, there's no marks underneath the... Underneath the cap, it looks beautiful. It looks fantastic underneath the cap. So it wasn't shorting under the cap. Um, but the, the mark on the board has obviously happened for some reason. Now this cap does ha seem to have a massive gash in the side of it or some kind of perhaps a vent in the side. Okay, now this looks okay. So what, what I was looking at is on this cap, there was uh, actually, um, focus. there was actually a hole in the, uh, in the casing here, in the protective casing uh, that was like here but the actual cap itself seems okay. I think it was just hit by, because this, this MOSFET on the board here exploded in a horrific manner. Uh, you can see this exploded in a horrific manner. So I, I think some shrapnel from this uh, actually just hit the cap and punctured the uh, casing a little bit. Uh, it didn't actually puncture the cap, but it uh, punctured the uh, protective stuff. Okay, next I'm going to take my multimeter and I want to see whether there's any short circuits on the on the rails here. So these capacitors, these are the rail caps, so these will smooth out the power supply switching and provide some kind of dampening for the output section to draw from. So yeah, we shouldn't have any short circuits on here. Yeah, Nicholas has got a point actually. That mark could have been there from factory. So I could just be searching for something that's non-existent right now. Alright. Well, I wanted to check that anyway. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to leave the cap out for, for, for a bit. because there's, there's no need to put that back in just now. So, first thing then is we're going to start with the, the power supply on this amplifier. Which, as you have, if you haven't already seen, the power supply is completely mutilated. Um, yeah, it's every single power supply FET has exploded in a very dramatic manner. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Now, this amplifier has obviously been repaired a few times. So, the power supply obviously died on this occasion. Let's push this to the other side. But when the power supply dies, it doesn't always kill the drive circuit. And the <laughs> this is just raining bits of carbonized fit. And, um, now, ob obviously, this power supply drive circuit is very badly is in very bad condition. You can see here on the back of the board, there's there's not really any um, any of the board protective coating left itself. We're right back down to the right right back to the uh, actual PCB filler material there. Uh, the traces do seem to be mostly there. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see whether the drive circuit got killed this time. Because it doesn't always get killed. Depends how the FETs blow. Now, I'm just going to check for obvious shorts on these driver transistors. We've got 76 ohms between 1 and 3. That's not right. Yeah, no, the, the, these need replacing. Okay, no. But kind of be careful with this because this area of the board, this area of the board is obviously quite badly damaged um, anyway. So I need to be careful because any heat that I add with my soldering iron won't help with this going forward. So I'm just removing most of the solder from these holes first and I'm going to go ahead and see how wiggly they are in the holes. 
Yeah, so you can see here on this one. It's got a nice big bulge in it on the front, so that's that's very fucked. Oh man, this is a mess. <laughs> okay. Right, so drivers are removed and you can see that it's still a mess on the top. Um, I'm gonna check whether these resistors and stuff survived. I think they did, I think they look like a bad condition, but I think it's just where they were covered in soot and stuff from uh, the actual transistors themselves going down. So these resistors from memory are, should be like a low value, like a, oh, these are pull downs. If they're pull downs, they'll be high value. I think these are the pull downs. So like, So we should have, yeah, they're purple and yellow, so we should have four, uh, 470 ohms, yeah, so that's a low-ish value resistance. So I'm just making sure these are all around about the 470 mark. Uh, this one reads 300 and something. This one's reading 322, which is a little off. And this one's reading 466. So I wonder whether that's as a res due to the resistor being bad or whether there's something else in the circuit because there's probably some solder bridges on the other side. This diode is reading uh, this diode is reading 10 ohms by the looks of it. This diode is reading 9 ohms. Uh, whether it's the diode or whether it's something on the board, though, that's yet to be known. Now, I'm just going to make sure that there's no um, solder bridges or bits of small bits of solder that are left over that were making a connection between any of these pads. So that needs to move over there. This is an absolute mess. I'm curious, actually, as to whether the board itself is now conducting. So let, let's lift this leg of this diode and see whether our 10 ohm resistance goes away or not. Okay, that's the diode lifted. Now let's see, is the 10 ohm resistance on the diode or is it on the board? It's on the diode. So this diode is toast, so that needs to go. I've got a feeling that it might not actually need these diodes. There are some, there are some diodes and components that are that are put into these boards that are no longer needed um, because they were implemented back when board design was much uh, much less advanced and that nowadays they're not they're not required. This 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 is some stuff that Gordon, the amp doctor, has told me about. All right, so what is this? What is this diode anyway? Let's have a look. Let's see if we can read what it says. Uh, it says O zero. It says C one zero, and that possibly is it. And then just underneath it, there's a five and then a T. So C ten five T. Let me try Google that. So it's uh, potentially a ten volt. Ah, oh, jeez. Potentially a ten volt Zener diode. Um, ah, 5T could be 5 tolerance, 5% 5 tolerance is the 5T, that could be what that means. So this is going to be the C10, so yeah, this is a uh, a 10, 10 volt Zener diode. And very annoyingly, I don't think I have, <laughs> I don't think I have any 10 volt Zener diodes. So I don't think I've got any 10 volt Zeners, so I might have to order some of those. But I think I should be able to check the rest of the circuit and get the rest of the, the stuff up and running without fitting that diode so let's do that so we've removed all of our all of our uh, drivers so what I can do now is I'm gonna check to see whether the TL494 was damaged because this this area is fucked so I'm gonna uh, put some power to the board I'm just going to probe the areas on the drive circuit uh, that the that the 494 should be sending the PWM signal to. See whether see whether it's present and see whether it looks good or not. Right, so I'm just going to turn the amp on and make sure it doesn't draw any any excessive current. Um, 
doesn't seem to draw any current whatsoever, which is good. It means that there's not anything that's mad shorted out. So let's see about these drive waves. Okay, so that's one. It's drawing 0.2 amps when the relay clicks in, which makes sense. So which means that the relay coil will be drawing 0.2 amps, which is fine. It looks a little bit noisy. It looks, a, looks a little bit... This is 26 kilohertz, which is about the right sort of frequency. Jumping around a little bit, but it generally looks okay. That's a 5.5 volt RMS signal, which is about right. Yeesh, that doesn't look good. Okay, so there's something that's not good here. Yeah, this. Oh no. Right. Okay. Let me try. And let me start off, try and see whether I can show you what's going on here. This is very important. This this is going to make all the difference as to whether this thing is going to explode again. Right. So we have spaces here for eight driver transistors. Okay. We're going to have four PNPs and four NPNs. The NPNs should have positive 12 volts on the middle pin here. We can see here that we have our, well, we've got nine volts because that's what we've got going on to amp at the moment, but we should have our B plus battery positive on the middle pin of the NPNs. Okay, and you can see it here. Because the traces are so badly fucked, they don't all have it on the top of the board. Some of it want to be on the bottom of the board, so I have to go upside down to check it. Uh, but yeah, on the PNPs, we should have zero volts completely nothing on pin 2 being the middle pin so this one we have completely nothing give it a wiggle there's still nothing on the screen this one over here we have completely nothing still on the screen which is good and this is the PNP this one over here however you can see that there's about 0.8 volts leaking let me zoom in a bit so we've got 0.8 volts leaking and some leaking square waves going to this pin. So I think the board is actually conductive here because there should be zero volts on this pad. And the same goes for pin number three over here. We've got almost the drive wave which shouldn't be there. The drive wave should only be on pin one over here. See this? This is pin one. This is this, this is the drive wave. It should only be there. On this pin we should have nothing. But we, we have some kind of noise there. I think the board is conducting between these pads because on the on the NPN we should have drive zero volts. Oh, that one's got a little bit of something. Oh, sorry, we should have, sorry on the NPN we should have drive nine volts. Yeah, drive nine volts and then zero. So NPN should be drive nine volts zero. Yeah. On the NPN of the other side we have drive. 9 volts and then 3 volts worth of noise so that is conducting through the board and on this one we have drive 9 volts 0 good drive and this is the PNP so we should have drive and then 0 volts which we do and then again 0 volts I think this we say yeah we should have 0 volts again yeah so this one here, this area here is problematic. We have something going on probably where power is being conducted through the board itself, through the burnt PCB is conducting electricity. Yeah, we can see that there. We've still got nine volts on here, which is correct. We should have nine volts on the NPN. And there's like 0.6 volts there so yeah I need to inspect further with this and find out what the flipping hell is causing that and it's probably going to be the board is actually conducting which is the worst it's this this is the worst possible scenario 
if the board is conducting, that is the worst scenario. So power supply off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually dig out some of this carbonized burnt section of the board here. Uh, then I'm going to spray her with 9% isopropyl alcohol and see whether the carbonized conducting conductive sections of the board were just on the top layer and by scratching the carbonized areas away might resolve that. So yeah, I'm just I'm just starting to scratch away a lot of this carbonized crap on the board and it goes all really fluffy as you can see. You can see how badly this has been burnt just by how much of this stuff I'm digging away and how much is coming off. But the good a good section of the board should be completely solid. Like it shouldn't be able to do any of this with but this is soft and fluffy because it's been really badly damaged by the heat. Fuck's sakes. This is fucking, this is, this is ruined. Yeah, so we're actually getting a nice hole here now in the board. It's not so bad over this side. I mean, it's bad, but we're not going to get a hole. Right, okay. Let's power this up again, and I want to. I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna stick my. Um, I'm gonna stick my oscilloscope probe into the PCB, into the actual board itself, and see whether we get any voltage spikes or anything on the actual PCB. All right, so I've turned the power supply on, so we've got 10.2 volts going in. Uh, I'm actually going to increase the input voltage up to 14 volts, uh, and that will help me see any leaks because the higher voltage will pass gaps a lot easier than the lower voltage will. So I'm just going to give it 14.4 volts. So I'm going to probe just the board, not the not the pads. Wow! <laughs> Holy shit! <gasps> look at that! I'm touching the the board, and look, we've got four volts on the on the PCB. So see, we should have we should have 14 volts. We should have like 12 or 14 volts here, which we do. We've got 14 volts on this pad here, which is this is the pin number two of the um, NPNs. But it's leaking into the board, into the P, into the PCB so badly that over here it's giving us five volts. So I'm going to have to cut all of this away anyway. Well, let's cut that bit away then. Let's cut that right back. Oh, my life. This is absolutely... So yeah, they see this amplifier either went down again because the previous repair tech didn't repair, didn't sort out this, uh, this burnt trace area, or this happened in its most recent failing. Not too sure which way around it happened, but uh, that's a nice big hole, isn't it? But what it, we shouldn't have is we shouldn't have it underneath the board. Oh, we still do. We still we've still got like three volts worth of it under the board. But as long as it doesn't, as long as it's not showing up on any of these other other pads, then this is this is salvageable. So it's obviously there, which is fine. As long as that 14 volts isn't showing up anywhere. Now I'm just going to turn the amp on and see whether the drive the drive wave is surviving. Okay, so the drive wave is present there. That's good. That's still our positive 14. So we should have drive B plus nothing. Drive nothing. Nothing. Good. Drive B plus. Uh, why do we have? Why do we not have B plus on this tray on this pad? I think that's because underneath we don't. I think, ah, that's right. I need to prove underneath. The B plus is on this trace, which is fucked on the underside. Yeah. Okay. I think we're actually ready now to make a a bodge attempt. 
Oh wow, this <laughs> Look, if I if I if I stick my probe into the board still it, it's still conducting this area of the board is still conducting this. Let's cut some more of that away. So just to see whether this is going to be worth repairing going forward, I'm just going to very temporarily mount some new driver transistors into this location um, and just like connect the pins up with some jumper wire, some temporary jumper wire, uh, because if there's no point me going and doing some extensive like rebuild of this area if it's not even worth repairing anyway. Because at this point, there's you know, I could actually use. I I do have access to some um, some uh, driver boards uh, which are universal. Uh, you can get them from the amp doctor in the UK. Uh, he made his own and had his own boards printed, which are basically drive power supply drive circuit boards. Um, so if this is unsalvageable, I could uh, just hit him up. I call him up and just um, I'll get one of those um, universal driver boards and what I would do is I would disconnect like cut the traces on this original circuit and his driver board just uh, runs off of the original TL494 so you take you take a jumper from pins 9 and 10 of the original TL494 and then you just run it to his um, piggyback board and you just mount it somewhere on the board <coughs> And then you can run the the uh, power supply fets off that if you've got an issue on the main board like this. I'm gonna have to do some soldering to the top and the bottom of the board. I'm gonna I'm actually gonna have these extended pretty high with the legs sitting really quite high up. Um, I'm doing the top board first because these vias will all be fucked so. We have to manually solder it from the top and the bottom of the board to ensure a good connection. I'm scratching off some of the um, insulation on this trace because this trace is actually the uh, B plus that provides the NPNs with the power. So I may want to solder a small jumper wire to this trace. Well, I may do it from the bottom of the board, but I'm just scratching that away in case I decide to do it from the top of the board. Actually, I might not even need a jumper. I can probably just do it like this. Where I do that, and then uh, that leg actually, I don't need that much. No, I've been too much. I just need a tiny little bend on here, and I can solder that to the trace. This is all just very temporary, just to see whether this thing's actually even going to be possibly working or even worth a repair attempt. Right, so the trace that went to that leg was here. See the, this this trace here? That went to that leg. So if I if I scratch off actually yeah, if I scratch off some of that This stuff is literally just floating in the in the air. Um, yeah, I'm actually gonna trim that. I'm gonna trim that trace off a bit because I don't I can't get my cutters in there. Yeah, just trim a little bit the trace off makes it a bit easier to, to bend this down. So I'm just going to bend the leg of this down on top of the trace. Use my tweezers as a lever. And push that down onto there like so. 
and then apply some solder and push it down and that should stay nicely. Okay, apply some solder to the trace as well. pretty good right so that's that one so we've got one so we've got that connected that connected that connected that one's connected uh, so then we've got these two over here to do that's gonna be pretty simple just need to pop that back through the holes that one through there and this this one through here And the last ones to go on, all these around this area here. Right, I think that should do it. That should just about do it. All right, okay. Let's check continuity. So we should have continuity between these two. Yep. Obviously these two have continuity, uh, and then these two obviously do, and these two, these two, okay, so we should also have continuity between the drives of these two, yup, yup, and yup, we should have continuity between all of these ones, so here and here, here and here, and here and here, okay, that's good. So yeah, it looks like that 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 we've done an okay-ish job on that. Let's bring that back around. We are still missing that Zener diode, but I wonder what difference that will make. I'm just gonna trim a couple of the legs here so they don't get pushed down when I put them back. Let's trim that one. Trim a couple of these off so they don't. Because yeah, when you put the amp back down, it can push the legs and short out against its neighbour. Let's just trim those short if they're too long. Okay, cool. Bear with me for, I would say, an hour. I'm going to go get some food, and then we shall continue with this once I have eaten. So it's not goodbye, it is see you shortly. Going to continue with this Ground Zero. Uh, and uh, interestingly, despite the horrific condition of the drive circuit, we seem to have made a successful repair on that area, so that's uh, quite good. Drive circuit to look beautiful as above on the scope. So we have perfect, nice, sexy looking drive waves on all of our power supply banks. I had to replace some gate resistors as well on these two banks and we've got it up and running. So now that we've got the power supply up and running, the next thing to check is the output section uh, because is there no good fitting FETs in the power supply section if the output is fucked because it will just blow the uh, new FETs we put in. So on the output section, I've been through this already, there aren't any blown MOSFETs on the output section. So I don't think the output section pulled the power supply down. I think the power supply died of its own accord and I reckon that it was probably to do with this drive circuit and its horrific condition. So. Because the power supply drive circuit is now appears to be working okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up one power supply FET per MOSFET bank, and we are going to see whether the thing wants to come on or not. So let's go ahead and do that. Greetings from Northern Ireland. How's it going, buddy? So as always with these power supply FETs, we're going to put one per bank, and I'm going to just solder it to the top of the board like so, so that we don't have to go through the holes and cause any unnecessary heating to these pads, etc. So I'm just going to so top solder it to the board like so. And I'm going to choose some pads that aren't obliterated, or try and choose some pads that aren't obliterated. Alright, 
that's one fed per bank. So if we uh, shut that off, wait for that to cool down for a minute, and then we can try and power her up and see what happens. Uh, and again, we've got snapped LEDs. This happens on a lot of these boards. The LED leads, they, they like to snap off. I'm going to actually replace those LEDs. So yeah, when we're replacing the LEDs, we need to make sure that we get the um, we get the polarity the correct way, way around. So for the green LED, the green LED is usually ran from the regulated voltage on the output section. So usually the LED, the green LED ground is often going to be on the same ground as the RCA ring, um, or if not, then it might be the main ground. But it's unusual; it's the main ground. Okay, in this amplifier, the green LED and the red LED are both ran off from the the ground. Okay, the main ground. Yes, yeah, in, in some amps, the um, the green LED is is run off of the output section ground, and the red LED is run off the power supply ground. Not in this case. Okay, let's power her up then, baby. Let's see if our uh, power supply drive circuit repair is actually any good or not. Uh, it seems to be good. On the scope, but will it be good in reality? Let us find out. So I've got 10.9 volts. I'm just going to lower that down to 10.2. Oh, 10 volts dead. Let's just make it easy. I'm going to allow I'm going to allow four amps to pass on the power supply. So let's probe our our power supply positive, which looks good on the scope. You can see there. And let's hit the remote and see what happens. That uh, looks possibly promising. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and see whether that charged the outputs at all. Uh, yes, we have negative rail and we have positive rail. Positive rail sitting at 21 volts, negative rail sitting at 16. It's a little bit different. Um, I'll make sure these are not heating up. Okay, let's go again. Uh, that looks promising. Yeah, that looks promising. Okay, uh, they're not getting hot either. And the roll voltage is climbed pretty big. Okay, good, good, good so far. Now let's do that again and let the whole thing come on fully. Nice. We were only drawing 1.6 amps, which is very, very low. Nice and low. The power supply fits are staying very cool. And let's make sure the output section is actually working. Uh, and to do that, we need to probe the low side, the back of the low side FET to make sure that, yeah, there we go. Class D switching. So the output section was fine. The power supply seems to have shat itself because of the absolutely obliterated drive circuit. So after fixing the drive circuit, it seems that we have a successful repair on our hands. Cool. Obviously, this needs endurance testing and bench testing as well to make sure that it's good going forward. But all this needs now is the rest of the power supply fits fitting onto the board because I've got one per bank at the moment, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and fit the rest of them. Um, let's just make sure the output section staying cold. Yeah, staying very cool indeed. Nothing getting hot there. We've got 24N40Fs used on this amplifier, which are a bit excessive on the voltage side. I could get I could get away with fitting 69N25, and it would make this amplifier much more stable at 0 0.5. But um, but you know that's going to cost the customer extra. It doesn't need them. It seems to be working fine as it is. So why why touch something that's not broken? Cool, great success. So, so yeah, that, that horrifically dodgy looking power supply drive circuit repair that we've made is uh, appears to be relatively solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, just discharge the... Um, it is pretty damn amazing that this thing fired up again. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Very, very, very surprising that this thing actually works. Still the Ground Zero 4K. Yeah, but it works. We fixed it. It works. Great success. So now I just need to put it back in the case, but I won't do that just yet. I'll do that later on after the stream because that is boring. That's boring and nobody wants to sit here and see me screw it all in the case. So let's just disconnect the power supply and move on to the next one. Uh, and also, just out of interest, the, the drive circuit doesn't appear to need that 10 volt Zenodyne. 
Uh, I did guess that they were redundant now. It doesn't, 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 that's not there. Those things aren't required anymore. So next, we're going to move on to a um, a Vibe three and a half K, which is very similar to SPL Dynamics D thirty five hundred, I think. So if anyone's ever had or worked on an SPL Dynamics D thirty five hundred, then this might be interesting for you. <laughs> 